AMD has a huge trick coming up their sleeve. ARM debuts some massive improvements that put them on level with the current companies that we love and respect, and Netflix is now a VTuber. Let's get into the hot news, my friends. I am your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet, starting off with the spice a little bit of news about AMD's upcoming Strix Point APUs. This is the first we're actually hearing of Strix Point, and this is going to be their Ryzen 8000 series class of product, which is obviously many, many years away. However, the big revelation that's coming out here from this rumor, which take this with a grain of salt, if you would, is that it's going to be utilizing big little architecture, which is something we know is coming up from Intel in a little bit. It's one of the things that makes ARM so successful is that you can have high performance cores and then more power efficiency related cores. And that's exactly what Strix Point is aiming to achieve especially in their APU setup. It's expected to be based on the Zen 5 CPU and on TSMC's three nanometer production. You add in DDR5 support, plus whatever else is gonna come out by the time that Ryzen 8000 hits the shelves, this could be a massive gain for AMD on the APU side of things. It's anticipated that this is going to have eight big Zen 5 cores plus four little cores, giving you 12 total cores and making it so that you have a really good setup when it comes to just running off of a single chip. Again, this is the first that we're hearing about Strix Point. Details likely will change in the run-up to these coming out in 2024, but it continues to show that at least on the forefront of ideas of rumors, AMD is continuing to iterate and make themselves better than everybody else. At least that's what everybody in the comments tells me. And everybody in our comments told me that they wanted this sponsor to come back to hot news, which is Synergy. We had multiple people request, hey, Brett, what's your link for Synergy? Well, it's linked in the video description, my friends. And in case you don't know what Synergy is, it's the application that allows you to control multiple computers with one single keyboard and mouse. Do you wanna copy and paste from one computer to another, but you don't wanna have to transfer over a hard drive? Just use Synergy. You wanna control the computer that's next to you because it's your office computer, you gotta wiggle the mouse so it makes it so it looks like there's activity going on but you're currently playing a game, just use Synergy, my friends. There's so many different use cases and Synergy makes it so that you don't need multiple setups of keyboard and mice to control multiple computers. You don't need a KVM switch. It just works over regular ethernet or Wi-Fi, and it doesn't require any special hardware. It works with Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Raspberry Pi. Synergy has over a million users across the world making their lives easier. Programmers, designers, gamers, streamers, legacy software users are all common Synergy users. Anyone who has two devices at one desk can benefit from the software. So check them out at the link in the video description. It's only $29 to buy the software, $39 if you need SSL encryption, but it's an invaluable thing, especially if you're ever managing more than one computer at the same time. So big thanks to Synergy for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. Now let's talk about another company that appears to be making big changes to its architecture. This one is not a rumor, but rather is something that was announced by ARM themselves. We now have details on the Neoverse V1 and N2 platforms, which look to make massive improvements to help justify that $40 billion valuation that NVIDIA gave to them when they desired to buy them out. These data processing chips that they're releasing can go up to 192 cores, a 350 watt TDP, 50% better performance for high performance compute and machine learning workloads, as well as 40% more performance in diverse workloads due to the ARM V9 extensions and other things like memory tagging. There's a lot of updates that are coming in. We'll leave links in the video description if you want a deeper dive on the actual Neoverse architecture. But suffice it to say, with things like Apple Silicon, which is being rolled out, as well as ARM continuing to upgrade their setups, it definitely looks like x86 is either going to have to completely renovate themselves or we're gonna be on completely different ships in the near future. And in the near future, I wanna be on a completely different desk because Secret Labs has let the cab out of the bag talking about their first piece PC desk, the Secret Lab Magnus Metal Desk with magnetic ecosystem for a whole host of options when it comes to cable management. They're gonna have a unique offset tray design as well as just different magnetic accessories to clamp things on as well as a magnetic RGB lighting strip.
strip. It's gonna come in a 59 inch size as well as a 47 inch size and start at $450. And you can see there's a magnetic headphone hanger, a magnetic cable sheath, a magnetic cable anchors, as well as magnetic mouse pads, as well as cable routing options everywhere. Secret Lab, really good on the gaming chair side of things. Now it looks like they're bringing that to the desk. However, while the desk starts at 449, apparently once you start adding in all of the accessories, you're looking closer to a $550 price tag. Speaking of 550, 55,000, Bitcoin GameStop update, Bitcoin going back up to 55,000, recovering after just what was a woeful weekend. Thank you, Bitcoin, for now being worth my time to talk about. GameStop being worth more today, up 5%. On the day, GameStop can chew into the moon. This is coming after they say they want to aggressively expand their store inventory selection, which is akin to them saying, we're going to sell so much that GameStop's going to be worth $85,000 per share. This is not financial advice. I don't know how to read financial documents. And Intel and Microsoft don't want other companies reading what's going on on your computer and then jacking your computer with it. What's that? Oh, it's not that type of jacking. Oh. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, crypto jacking is what apparently they're trying to defeat with their Intel threat detection technology beyond accelerated memory scanning capabilities to activate CPU-based crypto mining machine learning detection. This move further accelerates endpoint detection and response for millions of customers without compromising experience. So if your computer doesn't want to be jacked from crypto, Intel and Microsoft got your back. And in case you don't want the stock inventory of graphics cards to be jacked by crypto as well, you might want to support the CMP graphics cards that NVIDIA is rolling out. We now have new details on the CMP40HX. We got a showcase of how well it hashes, which given the name of 40HX, it roughly mines around 40 mega hash, and it allegedly is gonna be costing $699. This is according to the ASUS leak that has happened. We also have a leak of the potential release date of the 3080 Ti, May 18th is now the day. We talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News that it was potentially May 25th, but now the new rumor is that May 25th is the review date, May 18th is the announcement date, and never is when you're gonna be able to buy them. And YouTube doesn't want to buy any more general purpose architecture hardware to transcode the videos that you're seeing on their services. No, this video you're watching right now is going to be transcoded by a video ASIC. YouTube rolling that out. The VCUs or video transcoding units are going to be rolled out into Google data centers and they're going to deliver 20 to 33 times improvement in efficiency compared to the regular server platform. It's just going to be a regular PCI Express card. ASICs are great for specific things, it's kind of the name. What's the point of all this generalized hardware though? If you can't just shove it into things where it doesn't belong, that's not a phrase I thought I was gonna say today. Eurocom launching the world's first PCI Express 4.0 based laptop and the way they're doing this is by shoving a Z590 motherboard into this laptop so you can get all of that PCI Express 4.0 speed up to seven gigabytes per second reading right on those NVMe drives. It's gonna be a delicious time for you, my friends. And it's also gonna be a complicated time for you if you're on an Xbox Series X, but you wanna play on Steam with your keyboard and mouse. Apparently, that's a thing that can be done now with the latest Chromium-based Edge browser update that came out to the Series X. People have been using it to do things that you couldn't have otherwise done. You add into the fact that the Series X now has keyboard and mouse support, and then you essentially just use Parsec to then play Dota 2, CSGO, and Death Stranding on your Series X by streaming it from your PC. Apparently this is a hiccup, but you wanna play Steam games on your Xbox. The future's here, my friends, and HTC thinks the future is repairable. They are now partnering up with iFixit to make it so that Vive Virtual Reality Systems can be repaired through iFixit. You can purchase repair parts up through there. HTC putting out a blog post on the entire matter about how they believe in your ability to repair your own hardware. And Capcom believes in your ability to play with uh, a nine foot tall vampire lady because they're extending the time of the final demo for Resident Evil 8 or Resident Evil Village, however you will. It's a 60 minute demo, but the previous ones were only done in the 24 hour window, which was too short. I wasn't able to even get to any of them because they only happened on days where I was not around my PlayStation 5. This one is going to be taking place over eight days and GOG is going to be taking place over piles of cash. They announced that their revenue was up 114% in 2020, 
a lot thanks to Cyberpunk, $92 million coming in from Cyberpunk on the GOG platform. And on the VTuber platform, we now have to welcome in Enco, who is Netflix's latest VTuber, which I maybe I just I'm not in I don't understand the VTuber aspect of what's going on. It seems like a very dedicated community and fan base who doesn't necessarily like outsiders coming into it, but then they also appreciate these gimmick things. I don't know. Are you into the VTuber stuff? Let me know down in the comments and let me know what you think of Enco. And I also want to know what you think of AMD and them hiding stuff in their Radeon driver software. So you should check out yesterday's episode of Hot News right up there where we detailed exactly that AMD sneakiness. And I'll see you in the second episode later today, friends. Cheers.